Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning. Welcome to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Father PJ, good morning. Good morning, Father. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, whose only begotten Son entrust Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see Him, reigning in, glo in your glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Father, this week we have St. Mary Magdalene festivity. Why the stigma about Mary Magdalene? You know, when, when somebody talking about Mary Magdalene always <laughs> mention impurity and mm -hmm. indignity as well. So, um, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I, several months ago, maybe a year ago, I was at a deathbed uh, uh -huh. tending to one of our, our elderly parishioners. And of course, part of the last rites is the Litany of the Saints. Absolutely. And Mary Magdalene is featured very prominently early on in the Litany of the Saints, right after the Apostles, right? Right. And, um, and the, the elderly person had a daughter who was there who was not young. Um, she was old enough she'd gone to the academy before Dowling and St. Joseph had merged. And she looked at me bewildered and she said, well, when did Mary Magdalene become a saint? <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, what do you mean? And she's like, oh, well, I know, I know we used to not like her. And I, there is, there is probably more misunderstanding and confusion around this woman than any other in the whole of the church's history. And it's, and, and, and it's mostly, um, it's mostly bad, both for the confused and for her. <laughs> But also the word stigma mm -hmm. could be used because an unfortunate, unfortunately, that reputation It's still going on, you know? Yeah. It's so, still going on. So, so I the, mean, in the current times, people misunderstanding those uh, circumstances of failure as providential action for conversion as well. Right. You know? So the word Magdalene uh, in, in English and in, in most Romance languages has come to just be synonymous with like public sinner or usually yeah. like hooker, right? Is, yeah. is what uh, this is short. Literally, literally is the understanding about it. And so, um, you know, in Ireland, where, where my people come from, um, the Magdalene houses or the Magdalene laundries were, were, were where you would send your daughter when she got pregnant out of wedlock. That's where girls would go to have babies and the babies would be adopted out. But there were places where um, very often there was great abuse going on. They're, they're really kind of a scourge on that nation's history. The, the reason this happens, right, is because Mary is described in the scriptures as a great sinner and who then who has seven devils cast out of her and then becomes this sort of spiritual powerhouse. But because of that notion of great sinnerhood and probably because of misogyny, like <laughs> guys, guys like to imagine women sinning the way they'd like to. Uh, and so, so this gets sort of imputed, but the problem is that the, the name Mary, uh -huh. Miriam, um, just like the blessed mother, it's the very same name, right. Um, was one of the most common in ancient Israel. And so, so there are at least seven Marys that show up in the course of the gospels. And um, it's because they have the same name, just like if you have an uncle John on each side of the family, this is potentially confusing. Right. And, If we using the name of Mary Magdalene in a very unlike reputation for the woman, must be applied also for men. That's right. Must be applied for men. What I mean by that, all those examples of impurity also cover ourselves as a man. Well, what, all, what, all, what people like from the outside, so there's a kind of conspiracy theory. There's several conspiracy theories attached to Mary Magdalene. But the fundamental move is this, right, is that the church took this very strong woman and made her into a repentant sinner in order to diminish her credibility. And uh, that's, and I'm to be very honest, that's a stupid claim. The only way to make that claim is to misunderstand the entirety of the gospel If, if the gospel is proclaimed as the forgiveness of sinners, then it's not possible to diminish someone's credibility by acknowledging their sinfulness. This is like saying we made up the fact that Paul had Stephen stoned in order to diminish his credibility. Right. It simply doesn't hold. 
Now, that's different than saying that there haven't been other times that Mary has been used by uh, people with particular interests to try and advance an agenda. That, that, that's fair enough, right? Um, but, the, but the notion that, um, that there was some sort of deliberate attempt in the 4th or 5th century to diminish the fact that Mary was important in the life of the early church, it just doesn't hold water. It doesn't hold water liturgically. It doesn't hold water devotionally. It's not a real part of our history at all. It's not uh, a great uh, difference between Mary Magdalene's times comparable to our times in terms in terms of the scandals. Yeah, no, the no, scandals. No, no, no. no, it's too it's too dramatic to talk about it, and also certain scrupulosity to open this obviously Pandora box right. about this illicit behavior in terms of moral, you know? So, you know, as I said before, this name Mary or Miriam in, uh, uh, in ancient Hebrew, right, was one of the most popular girl names. And I think Christians often forget this part. The reason that it was one of the most popular girl names and the reason certainly the Blessed Virgin Mary received that name was because of Moses's sister. Yeah. So Moses's older sister is called Miriam. She's the first Miriam we encounter in the scriptures. And um, and, and she, of course, is the one who, who, who bursts into song as the people cross the Red Sea. I will sing to the Lord who is gloriously triumphant, horse and rider he's cast into the sea, right? Um, so, so Miriam is the, kind of the great songstress of Israel. She is, in a certain way, the every woman, right? She's mm-hmm. first sister who cares for the, the, the child Moses and then sets him adrift on the boat. Right. She's, she's later the sort of maternal figure. And she's a kind of a warrior. And, um, and especially in the, in the West, we often forget that um, early depictions of the Blessed Virgin often had her clad in battle as ready to go out into war. Mary Magdalene is, follows in the same pattern. She is the every woman. She is a sinner. She is absolutely a sinner. And maybe some of that sin was sexual. I don't know how we'd know that, but like... This uh, is an speculation. This is my follow-up question to you. Right. Sometimes we can make more speculation based on the behavior of the people that certain facts. Right. Well, and, and, and on us, right? So like if, Correct. if our sins, if we experience sin in a, in a dominantly sexual way, then we're probably going to presume when other people sin, they do the same thing. But the moral life is much more complex than that. Some people struggle with sexual sin. Some people struggle with pride and vainglory. Some people struggle with greed and envy, right? Like this varies widely across the spectrum. What's important is not what our sin is or has been, but that like the Magdalene, we were willing to convert. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Hello, this is Steve Rage, inviting you to join me along with Matt Wilcom and Father P.J. McManus for the Iowa Catholic Radio's 15th anniversary pilgrimage to the Holy Land, November 11th through the 20th, 2023. We'll have mass and dinner on the shores of the Sea of Galilee and visit the upper room where Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist. Plus, my wife Janet and I will be offering invigorating teaching along the way. Not all pilgrimages are created equal. Brochures and details available at iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarans strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsarah.org, join S-E-R-R-A.org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. In our culture, religion is often considered a mere matter of personal taste. Just as some prefer vanilla and others chocolate, you have your religion and I have mine. But Jesus Christ did not claim to be just another prophet or spiritual teacher. He claimed to be truth itself, as when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Upon hearing Jesus' truth claims, Pilate scoffed, what is truth? Sounding very much like a skeptic from our own day. But every person, ancient or modern, must confront Jesus' claims to be the Messiah, the Son of God, whose blood atones for our sins, who dies and rises again, and will return as King and Judge of the world. Such claims have only two possible responses, true or false. For if you claim to be God and the Savior of the world, you either are or you aren't. As C.S. Lewis wrote, Jesus could have either been a lunatic, a liar, or the Lord. But the one thing he could not have been was a mere good moral teacher, as so many say. But if Jesus is truly the Lord, then he is the Lord of all. And that's not a matter of personal taste. This is Greg Ewell for Faith Check. 
At Intervisions Healthcare, we see patients with unplanned pregnancies from ages 12 to 43. An unplanned pregnancy is traumatic at any age. For that reason, we specialize in educating, encouraging, and empowering vulnerable and at-risk mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy with the medical information and services necessary for them to make an informed decision. For more information on the free medical services at Intervisions Healthcare or to support our mission or become a volunteer, visit IVHcare.org. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Before the break, we were talking about Mary Magdalene, Father. What about those Mary Magdalene's in this current time? What is the idea about dignity of the woman? How we can approach in a respectful, those kind of weaknesses, behavior from the woman today, but at the same time, Amazing occasion for conversion, for <laughs> testimony of lives, you know? You know, St. John Paul II, way back in 1988 now, so this, it seems like ancient history, right? But, uh-huh. but, in, but in the life of the church, just a blink of an eye, he wrote a, a very important document that I'd encourage all of our leaders, or all of our listeners, not, not, not readers, um, all of our listeners to, to look up. Um, called Mulieris Dignitatum, or On the Dignity of Women. On the dignity. Um, and he did it in a year dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, and in in the document, he talks about the specific dignity of women as distinct from a, from a dignity specific to men, um, not because it's of lesser value, but because it's shaped differently in light of womanhood. What constitutes sort of the, the the full dignity of most women is that they become mothers. Right. And what constitutes the full dignity of most men is that they become fathers. Absolutely. So the begetting of children really is the best thing in the natural world that we can accomplish, that we can accomplish. Um, and, and those of us that are not natural fathers or natural mothers like you and I, um, we... Our, our dignity is not lessened because of the fact of not having biological children, but the dignity that we possess is um, like or kin to the dignity that, that, that that's impressed upon one by becoming a mother or a father. Because fathers and mothers are different things, they're not just gendered names for parent, um, the dignity of women is specific, and it's specific in its maternal disposition toward the world. This is different than saying all mothers are soft. Uh, I don't think anybody who knew my mother would ever call her soft. Um, but, but, but I was never confused about the difference between my mother and my father. That, that there was, there was a, a quality of femininity about my mother that was distinct from the quality of masculinity about my father. Right. Um, and, and what the Holy Father is trying to impress on us is that the dignity of women comes to full flower when they're able to nurture there's a certain way he uses all kinds of metaphors, but there's a certain way in which, um, and of course this is only ten years after his visit here to Iowa, mm-hmm. um, uh, that that language of nurturing and cultivation it's agrarian, it's farm based. So there's a certain you know m- you wouldn't think of most like big hulking Iowa farmers that are men as especially feminine creatures, but what they do relative to the earth is a fundamentally feminine act. They, right. they, they nurture and cultivate a, a space in order to bring forth life. And, and, and that's what sort of constitutes the peculiar dignity of women in whatever way that happens to work in a particular woman's life. Um, I mean, to me, it sounds very eloquent, the word nurture, nurture. How important is to know that? Because it's not only biologically, physiologically, but also in terms of love, charm, tender compassion, because it's an inspiration for the figure about the woman that is completely, may I use that expression, disfigurate in the current war. It's woman in control. You must need to go to work. Not because it's not the capacity to lead in certain areas, but about the nurture 
of the woman itself. So Chesterton had this line 100 years ago where he said the problem with feminism, and this was feminism 100 years ago, so like we're in a different world now, granted. But the, but the, but the line, I think, is insightful. Um, so the problem with feminism is that it takes all of the vices of men and applies, it to, applies them to women with none of the virtues. Um, wow. Now, that might be overshot, and I, I get why that <laughs> might rankle people today, but I think it's worth hearing in this way. Notice he says vices without virtues. So he's not saying that the virtues that have typically been associated with men, courage, bravery, steadfastness, loyalty, that those kinds of things are not also proper to women. Right. Um, but certainly very brave women serving in our military today or, or, or taking on um, serious injustices, that, that that's – they shouldn't not do that because they're women, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there, but but there, there is, there's something about Mary. There's something peculiar about the woman in the life of the church and about our own disposition toward God. You know, the church as an organ is fundamentally feminine. Like we yeah. stand as feminine in light of the masculine Christ. Jesus Christ. And, 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 and so, you know, you say, what is the difference between a man and a woman? Well, what is the difference between our Lord and the Blessed Mother? Like, and it's not a beard. <laughs> Those right. things are superficial, right? Um, but, uh, but, but it's a disposition. Um, and, and I'm not saying this because as a man, then I get to be more like Jesus. As a priest, I'm aware almost every moment of every day how fundamentally not like Jesus I am. This is a very good one, <laughs> but it's but but it's because um, my own experience of men and women tells me that there are differences in them, and that the the best of men and the best of women are equally best but distinct. Could we not, in terms of comparison, but at least see the enlightened presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary as a queen of purity, as a queen of heaven, and Mary Magdalene? After conversion, so that's right. So, 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 so you know the, the 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 fathers talk about the Blessed Mother this way, right? She is uh, the great exemplar, not the great exception. Okay, the great exemplar or example, not the great exception. Mary, the Blessed Mother, possesses by singular grace at the moment of her conception what all of us are intended to possess. By 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 grace, like in the life of grace in, in in the church, so so the Magdalene becomes the same kind of thing that the Blessed Mother is by conversion, right? And by and by the slow growth of grace in her life, um, you know the the word that is translated into English as Mother of God, uh, Madre de Dios, it, it's it, it, it's it, in the Greek, um, Theotokos, right? It's 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 not the word for mother. So tokos isn't the word for mother. Right. It's, it's the word for bearer or carrier. Carrier. And so, 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 so there's a famous sermon, I think by St. Cyril of Jerusalem, but I'd have to look it up, um, where he says, all are called to be theotokoi. Theotokoi. We're all called to be mothers of God, bearers of God, carriers of God carriers into of the God. world, even as the Blessed Mother bore him in her womb. In fact, when you receive the Holy Communion, you are another We become sacrarium. a God-bearer. That's right. That's wow. right. We become a God-bearer just as the Blessed Mother. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Iowa Catholic Radio welcomes Scotty McCreary. With special guest, Ali Colleen. Give myself five. Sunday, July 24th at the Iowa Event Center Ballroom. I'm in between Friday night wild and quiet Sunday morning. Tickets and information available at celebratecountry.org. Sponsored by Ball Team. Amazon Smile is a simple way to support Iowa Catholic Radio. When you are shopping on Amazon, consider shopping through Amazon Smile instead. You get all the same great deals, and your order will also help support Iowa Catholic Radio. All you need to do is choose Iowa Catholic Radio as your nonprofit to support when you first log in, and Amazon will do the rest. Every Amazon Smile order you make, Amazon will donate to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support Iowa Catholic Radio while you shop at smile.amazon.com. And thank you for supporting Iowa Catholic Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. 
What great news for donors to the Catholic Tuition Organization. You now receive 75% of your donation back in Iowa tax credits. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. Best gift ever. Online, ctoiowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences. mchs.edu. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. This coming Sunday, the seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time, the Gospel of Luke describes a very interesting connection with our reflection today. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend for whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me, for the door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, then he will get up to give them whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, then how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's very interesting, this piece of the Gospel. Uh, Father, in the first part, I agree. I agree with a person, you know. Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, I have great memories about my mom. Wake up at midnight yeah, right. to see how are things going with us. So, yeah, no, I, 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 I you know, um. It's like a, it's like when kids are having nightmares, right? And the, exactly, and the first time exactly. you go in the room and calm down, sweetheart, you're fine. Second time, calm down. There's no monsters under the mom's bed. Here, mom's here. Mom's here. And the third time, which come on into bed with me because I'm I'm tired of this stuff, right? <laughs> what about um, the fifth one? Right. Okay. <laughs> and so so I it, so it, there is something very maternal about this. Uh, honestly, as I read the gospel this time, what came to mind for me was the the priest version today, which is where the emergency line goes off. At one in the morning. Oh, yeah. And it's not a real emergency. Like, it's not like nobody needs last rites. It's just somebody who's freaked out. I believe it happened. Oh, yeah. This happened happens all the time. Often. And, often. And so the first time you go, you know, you know uh, Tony, quit calling. Just go back to bed kind of thing, right? Yeah. And then Tony calls back. And then by the third time, you're like, if I just get up and talk to Tony for five minutes, he'll go away. Right? Um, and so... I, th- th- there's some version of this, I think, that exists in all of our lives. But the but the point of the lesson here, right, is um, providence, right, or persistence, rather. That, right. Like that, that if um, that if we're persistent, you can sort of just wear people down. When we're talking about providence, the first uh, synonymous that came to my mind is provider. God is the divine provider, so He never let us by ourselves. He is the divine provider. Yeah, that's right. And, and and that's the reason that the um the images that Jesus is using here are food based, right? Right. Because he, he wants us to recognize that what God, what God's giving here are the things that we properly need. This is not the whiny child at the grocery store who's at the front, you're you know, and the and they're pointing at the end cap and saying, Mommy, buy me that, mommy, buy me. This I is want not that. I want it's, that. it's not that. No, no. It's it's about the stuff that we actually need, which is why the second part of, of the gospel is often so frustrating for people because you say, well, I've asked and I haven't received and I've sought and I haven't found and I keep knocking at the door and nobody ever opens it up. Um, well, it's, we're not asking for the right things. We're not disposed in the right way. We're not open. God is giving us stuff. But we're not open to what he's giving us. We just want what we want. 
And that's where, you know, the church's insight about concupiscence, that all of our desires are disordered, that we tend to mostly want things that aren't good for us, is so important. And also is that frequent uh, request from the people, I have doing the novena. I have prayed right. the rosary. Why God did not respond according with my needs? So, and this is some kind of unkindness. You know, I, I, I have a story that I share often in preaching, but that I think might be useful for our listeners. Um, another assignment, another city far away from here. Um, not Christ the King. Not Christ the King. <laughs> I was, when I was assigned in another place, there, the parish I was in, there was a, a Russian Orthodox church just about a block away. Uh-huh. And I'd never been in. It only seemed to be open on Sunday when we'd be having Mass too, and so I'd never be able to peek in. And one night I was, I was out walking, and they were finishing a wedding or something, and the doors were open, so I popped in the back. And I started chatting with the priest, and we're having a nice visit. And, and as we're talking, um, this older lady comes in, and there's a bouquet of roses in front of uh, wow. the, the icon of Our Lady. And so they go to take—she she grabs the flowers from the icon of Our Lady and walks out. But it was confusing because the roses weren't, like, wilted or they weren't ready to be thrown out. So I asked the priest what he was do- what she was doing. And he said, well, you know, um, we, uh, uh, we have this tradition that when, um, when you make a, a petition to the, to the Blessed Mother, um, when she answers it, you, you dedicate a bouquet of roses to her. And then you share the roses out at random to people that wow. you don't know. Well, the parish that I was working at was dedicated to St. Therese of Lisieux. Oh, and so the little flowers. Who, and people always get roses when the novena to the little flower is done. So I realized that the roses that were showing up on our cars were coming from the Orthodox Church. And, 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 wow. and, and at first I was kind of miffed. I was like, oh, this is the, the prayer isn't being answered the way that we wanted. And he said, no, but Father, look, the answer to our prayers became the answer to yours. The thanksgiving wow. from our prayers became the physical answer to yours. Isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful and also it's very maternal sign yeah. of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Maternal presence. And sometimes we miss it. This is small and tender gesture from Our Lady. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about when I talk about the peculiar uh, dignity of women. Father, we are approaching our pr- ending season from Be Not Afraid today. So could you please send us with your blessing? May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists. 